Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited. I have, again, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, one of your favorite people too, Janine. How are you, Janine? Hi, everybody. I'm doing great, Bryce. Looking beautiful as ever. Every Very time good. I see, even my boyfriend said something the other day. He was like, Janine's really pretty. I was like, I know. <laughs> I know she is. Aww. She just shines that light right through her right eyes on. and her, her essence. So, oh my God, this has been yeah. a crazy <laughs> end of the month. I know we know September. I mean, this is it, guys. I don't see how much further we can actually go in this show because yeah. it's like, what else? And I, people are getting really confused because so much is going off right now. We don't know what's fake. We don't know what's real. Yep. And for those of you here in the United States, we know that our lovely city of New Orleans, a huge American cultural city, was hit again by a hurricane. Um, and it's kind of spooky because our favorite people, the mainstream media, are not really talking about this. And that's spooky. I'm going to end with that, though, because we know that other natural disasters in the past, especially things that have hit New Orleans, have not necessarily been so natural. Yeah. So um, we'll, I want to end with present day. What I want to do, though, because we are breaking down New Orleans on my channel, we're doing deep dives in some, it's been, in, into some of the New Orleans history, as requested by the viewers. I want to start at the beginning because the ties to New Orleans that I have found have so many uh, ties to this religious sect, we'll just say. We'll just call these these haters that come from this religious cult. Um, we know who, what we're talking about. And so I want to get some clarification at first on uh, through some historical figures that we have spoken about. So New Orleans was founded by the House of Bourbon, which was the monarchy at the time in France. This was Louis XIV, the very famous Louis XIV. This was the time of the man in the Iron Mask, which I am going to ask about. Mm -hmm. there was, this was also the time of what they called the Affair of the Poisons, which was basically the, the aristocrats were exposing themselves as being Satanist. You see references to them drinking that special drink. There's paintings of them doing stuff to to little babies. Um, yeah. and so they were very open about it. That's one thing I really like about the French Royal family is they don't hide this. They're actually yeah. very arrogant about it and show it. Yeah. Well, my first question is actually, we're going to go back to the house of Valois, which was the house before Bur uh, the house of bourbon to kind of set this up in the monarch, the monarchy, the, 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 the wife, the mother, the, the queen was Catherine de Medici. Now Catherine de Medici came from an Italian banking family guys banking family wow. who were rumored to be more powerful than the Rothschilds wow okay wow and, she, and this I want to say this as well for like super fundamentalist Christians who are watching who are still having a hard time because they're her, the Medici, Medici's had members of their family that also were popes and they were also known Satanist there are letters we have where people talk about how this woman, Catherine de Medici, the queen of France, ate, and I'm going to have to blurb this word out, but all right, oh. actual letters. Now, 20 years ago, we would have laughed at that Siri, Siri, uh, silly, you know, ancient rumors. But now we see that we're like, oh, yeah. crap. So my question, my first question to set this up going into New Orleans, uh, it was Catherine Medici, Medici, in fact, a Satanist? And did she, in fact, participate in the religious activities? I'd say yes, uh, but it looks like she was, uh, she even went rogue from the Satanist uh, sect. So that's interesting. Yeah, what she looks like she was a bit of a rogue member and uh, like she, her favorite were boys. Oh, interesting. Girls, so that's interesting, little boys. But I feel like she was even a rogue member of, so she didn't even practice the way uh, you know, because they have rules and dates they like to follow. And I think she just liked the whole, uh, she liked the whole um, being destructive. Yes. And, and the yucky parts. Okay. And she didn't even practice it. As, she was a bad uh, 
Satanist because in a way, because she just liked the, 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 the fun parts uh, in her opinion, fun, not certainly our opinion. And uh, so she, she was absolutely um, kind of her own person and got into the evilness of it. So there are, I forgot to mention her children. She had lots of children. They all passed away and never sat on the, the, the throne. That's how it switched to the house of bourbon. But, um, her own daughter wrote a book, and this was 500 years ago, guys. We're not talking about like 100 years ago. This was 500 years ago about how her mother had her bro- had her son and her daughter made her son have relations with her daughter while she watched. Yeah. So even that the princess was writing these down and ran away from this woman was, and so, and she did did. So my question, next question, did she introduce? this form of ritual to the, the, the court, to the French court, or was it already there? Uh, no, she introduced it. Okay, yeah, cool. she introduced uh, yeah. it. Yeah, all right. They were doing other yucky things. Because mm-hmm. I think when uh, there's this elite, there's this whole, where you have generational Mm-hmm. people who have nothing, no purpose other than to hold on to their wealth and power. Mm-hmm. Okay. And really just sort of uh, don't really uh, like, just look at Harry and William. I mean, just on the surface of the pretend story of them, um, yeah. you know, two frustrated guys without like they, they may, they may appear to have some social purpose or whatever, but you, even in the way they present Harry, I mean, it's so obvious that he's just a bored royal who's right. uh, looking for trouble and really doesn't fit in anywhere. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. my interpretation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. You can just believe that these people were idle and bored. And so they got into up to all kinds of mischief. So that's what this, so they're looking at this other mischief. So they were already, it's not like they were goody two shoes and she came and debauched them. No, she just added one. She that's brought added more. One. To their mischief yeah okay i'm glad i asked that because that she kicks off the house of bourbon now one last question with the, the medici family according to the history books they're they're no longer around their line was extinct i don't think so though i think they might still be around just maybe hidden is their bloodline still around and are they one of the major players in this battle still medici bloodline Uh, no, they went into hiding. So they're still around. Mm-hmm. They went into hiding at a certain point. So they're just, uh, uh, they might have changed their names. Yeah. They might have changed their, you know, kind of yeah, like yeah. Yeah. lots of royals do, right? Things got really heated up for them. So they went into hiding and uh, they're even presenting as a different culture right now. Oh. So they're from a whole different uh, cultural background, it would appear. So they hid in a different culture. So you wouldn't go looking for them there. Wow. I don't know which one, but that's what it's saying. So I'm going to tell you guys again, for those who are still really clinging, clinging to this dogmatic Christianity, the Medici's had popes. They were bad, bad people and they were bankers and they, they controlled them. They were able to puppet the Royal families from what I understand, kind of like the Rothschilds because they had so much wealth. Yeah. Um, so I just want people and I'm glad. Okay. So after Catherine de Bedecci in the house of Valois, all of her sons, France had this rule where women could not rule. So it went through the sons. Once the sons all lost their lives, their cousin, Henry the fourth from Navarre, he took the throne um, and that brought in the house of bourbon, which was the house. It was Louis the 14th, which was his grandson, I believe that um, found in new Orleans. Now I'm going to ask a few questions about the house of bourbon um, before we now move over to new Orleans, just so we have an understanding of the people who are responsible for this colony in the new world. And that this time period, Louis the 14th was a lot of scandals happened around him. There was the affair of the poisons. A lot of people talking about the aristocrats playing with Satanism, basically, and stuff we know to be true today. Um, the man in the iron mask was in the, and people think it might've been his, his twin brother, but we see a lot of uh, imagery around the man in the iron map mask that is very suspicious now, especially with Freemasonry. So was the ant man in the iron mask, a bloodline, person was he part of the house of bourbon 
And if so, will the cards let us know why they did that to him? So, yes, he was what you asked, a big yes. Okay, so he was causing trouble to the, 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 the powers that be that wanted the um, satanic uh, stuff to stay. Or uh, So he, he was a troublemaker. So he was trying to push back, basically. Yeah. He had yeah. a conscience. <laughs> he had a conscience, and it looks like he thought it was dysfunctional what they were doing. And a lot of people were uh, in danger of losing their lives around that that bunch. So he he spoke up, and uh, he's coming from a good place. So they didn't like that. So they demonized him. Wow. So that yeah. explains a lot why they covered his face so no one could see yeah. who he was. They, they they treated him well in the prisons. He had like luxury in his prison. He was obviously that that explains a lot. Now here's a question: Is the soul of that person that was in that mask is he back today? Is that soul back today and in this battle? Wow. <laughs> you bet he is. Okay. He's on uh, Mr. T and the White Hats team. And he's likely a general because he's in the good army. Wow. I, I have a feeling that the especially the higher ups in this battle have a way of remembering who they once were. And I, I just kind of have a feeling that everyone's back right now still, you know, fighting together. That's awesome. That makes me happy. That's great. That's great. All right, cool. Well, now that we kind of understand who the people were that founded New Orleans, now let's move over to New Orleans. New Orleans, of course, for those who are not familiar with American history, was a part of the French colony. It actually, it was Louisiana or was the state of Louis, which was Louis the 14th. And it was a huge territory back in that time, reaching all the way up into Canada. All right. So it was huge. We still have Quebec, us French speaking. And then now it's this small little boot, but that whole territory. Now, from what I understand, the reason why Louis the 14th put claims to that area and wasn't just solely focused on settling the, the, what we call Canada today was because he was trying to cut off the British from being able to get past the Mississippi River. Now, we know that New Orleans, like a lot of places down here in the Deep South, are really hard to live in they're very swampy they're very muggy that leaves that that gives a lot of um folklore to to our culture down here in the deep south but my question specifically in this was there a specific reason why they picked the location of new orleans to put a city there because we know that was a bad location for a city now because of its uh relation to sea level but was there a specific maybe more nefarious reason for them to put a post there yep. you bet you bet it was designed the whole city by what we now call the dark cult or what i call the dark cult so deep state dark cult and or i, I don't know if, i can't say the word on here probably yeah, exactly yeah we, but you know what i mean yeah those guys the players we've been talking about mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so they went looking for it. Somebody saw it in a vision. Somebody saw it in a vision and they were led by their, their spirit guides, which would be the demonic spirit guides, right? Because it's these guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are my bad guys. In this whole spiritual war, this card's shown itself to be about those characters, also the devil. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it came up, it was the very first card to describe who put that city there and why, why did they put that city? So one of their demonics and or somebody had a vision that came through them from their entities. And uh, that's where they decided to put and it was somebody with a lot of power. And this is interesting, because I feel like uh, later, all the catastrophes and everything, I feel like that's nature's karmic, unfortunate, because it was built on ley lines that are mm -hmm. incredibly not to the good. And yeah. uh, so there, there's a lot of stuff can be fallen. So it's yeah. very unfortunate. They're going to have to change the ley lines, mm -hmm. move, move the city somehow, change the name of it or do, I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. Hate, I hate to say that, but a lot of things in the world are going to have to change.
Absolutely. And that's kind of what, because, you know, they say old people back then didn't understand it was below sea level. Yeah, they did. They, they can, you can see it in New Orleans. You can see the Mississippi River higher than your head. Like they weren't that, they, they knew what they were doing. They were very yeah. well aware of what they were doing. Yeah. And it, it, maybe not the explorers, but their bosses knew, you know, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, so let's, so when New Orleans started to started as a settlement, um, obviously they all the, the the people like us that had no idea that were coming to this new world to have a new life had no idea. Like they, it was advertised in the Garden of Eden, which it absolutely is not down here in the South. It's hot. It's muggy. There's mosquitoes. There was yellow fever. All that kind of stuff happening. They had a really hard time populating this area, and so they did this thing where they brought women over they did this in, in canada as well they brought women from like monasteries over to marry the men first they tried to bring in women who were in the jails who were from brothels from france but the men didn't want those ladies so they brought these young girls over they brought them to biloxi which is now biloxi mississippi mobile alabama which was part of this as well and new orleans now we call these girls in america the casket girls because they brought their trunk with them they brought trunks with them that had all their stuff and they were married off well the women these girls would stay at the with the nuns until they found their husbands well there's a huge story coming out of new orleans it's been around forever that there was one batch of girls that were brought into new orleans that did not look like the other girls they came at night they're very pale and pasty and they had these huge trunks that looked like caskets with them when they got to the convent that's still there in new orleans they told the nuns to put the trunks trunks in the attic and seal the attic up the nuns did that the girls were all very weird very strange looking girls and then a few nuns got curious went up to the attic and saw open it up and the trunks were open gone windows were open there was nothing in them people believe that these girls brought vampires into New Orleans. Um, and now, of course, for years, we thought that that's all that's folklore. But now, even at the convent today, those windows are still boarded up. Um, and so my question is, since now we know there's so much that they tell us is fantasy that's not fantasy, is there truth to this story? Did these girls bring in some type of like a demonic being um, that we would call a vampire? to feed off of these people in the new world? You bet. You bet they did. And they, but so they succeeded and they were very proud that they, it's like they sent these demonics in to wreak havoc and create a trade that had to do with, so I don't know about vampires, but it had to do, well, it's kind of in a way, yeah. think about this. It had to do with stealing children. So those demonics were in particular, likely more likely connected to Moloch type demonics and, or uh, who would create the trade of creating this party substance that we talk about. Uh, certainly uh, on my show, we've talked about it. And I think your audience probably knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's coming from ch substances from children. Yep. I, I, yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is why I'm so glad my audience told me to do New Orleans because I feel like New Orleans is a hot spot for this. Yeah. Um, and I want to make, I want to point something out as well. And I, this is going to be my next question because we know about Haitian voodoo. We know about all that kind of stuff coming from New Orleans. Now I am very open-minded towards voodoo because my family comes from the low country, which is Charleston and Savannah, we have that as well from, from the African people that came over. And I'm not, it doesn't scare me. I think it's, there's a lot of be beauty to that faith. Now, my question is the difference between Charleston and Savannah is Charleston and Savannah were Protestant strongholds. New Orleans was Catholic. All right. So did the Catholic stronghold on the city that they brought in all these higher ups from the Catholic church, I'm not talking about the people, I'm talking about the powerful higher ups. Were they put there specifically to work with these creatures to bring in these children, to bring in this trade, this business? Does that make sense? <laughs> that makes sense. No, yep. makes sense. You bet. Knew it. So it was planned by these guys and it was the destiny of at the time of the, the area and destiny being so 
destiny could be created by them using a sort of astrological and esoteric, so creating a created destiny. So in other words, they used, again, ley lines and to choose the area. So there's something about the energy there that was perfect for their needs, so the demonic needs. So it's very very interesting. Uh, yeah. Like they, they remember, they like things opposite of us. We like beauty, serenity. We, you know, for the most part, we like uh, to be peaceful and we want safety and comfort uh, where we put our home. And we're right. not looking for disruptive energies. And we can feel when something doesn't feel like it's going to be really conducive to our peace of mind. Okay. Right. So they're the opposite of that. Yeah. Okay. They I like. The yuckiness. Okay. Remember, uh, think, think the dumbs and what yeah. goes on down there and who could even survive or even go down there. You, yeah. horrifying. And they're like thriving in their yuckiness down yeah. there. Yeah. It's one well, you think too, guys, if you go back to that time period where they've started, they started doing this, the majority of, they had access to native Americans, right? Yeah. In this area, this area wasn't totally pop, like the, the coastal, the colonies on the coast had a lot of Europeans there at that point. But over here, there were more natives. And so I could see how they would be able to take children, yep. you know, and they yep. wouldn't be accounted for with with the with the European people. So maybe not noticeable anyway. Yeah, that makes. And, and so that's my next question. With the Haitian voodoo that you find in New Orleans, is that, did the Catholic Church of New Orleans, did they start a propaganda smear campaign against the Haitian voodoo to cover up from what they were actually doing? Kind of like what we see the media doing with Mr. T, like flipping the narrative almost. Yep, that was the idea. So they looked and planned a long time in advance and took their time uh, to do exactly that. So planting thoughts and words and ideas and things out there, blaming it on them so they would look bad. Yeah. So a lot of their activity might actually, what appears to be the Haitian voodoo activity would likely be uh, these demonic activities. That's why, I, and, I, and I'm working on it, guys, we're going a little bit into the future because I haven't released the Voodoo series yet because I'm still working on it because I really want to take good care with that series yeah. because I feel like we have been putting so much blame on a, a group of people that are, are not responsible. In fact, yeah. it, uh, it's, it's the Christian community that's actually the one that's been responsible for the damages that have been done. And so I really want people to understand that. And let, let, let me ask you about Marie Laveau. She, um, and we're going to do a deep dive into Marie Laveau, guys. If you don't know who she is, just hold on. Marie Laveau is said to be one of the strongest voodoo priestess in New Orleans. People still go to her grave and pay homage to her. But a lot of people say she actually wasn't a voodoo priestess. So my first question is, was she a voodoo priestess or was she not? Say your name again. Marie Laveau. Uh, she was an interesting um, combination of things. So certainly not all good or all bad, because this is a balance card. And no, no demonic card coming up for her whatsoever or bad, uh, bad news or anything. Really good at making money from her work. So, you know, a lot of people that do uh, spiritual work who actually charge for it. Now, there's a lot of... There's a lot of charlatans. I get it. A lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but there's also a lot of really, really good people who do work that spiritually helps people, but they put their whole life on hold to do it. So they obviously have to uh, make their living from it. You know, hello. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, then they have to charge. It's like uh, they're, they need to be living in some kind of comfort to be able to offer uh, eight hours a day comfort to others with their exactly. spiritual work. Yeah, that's just how it works, people. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, <laughs> people it's, are so it's, silly about it, right? I know she it was really good at making money because this or attracting means. So sometimes it's not like I've worked in communities like the Haida Gwaii, where I was the tarot card reader on the island. Okay, but nobody had any a lot, lot of people that came to me didn't actually have a lot of cash flow or anything. So uh, I just 
worked out a trade system. People would come and trade halibut fish that they just caught or, uh, you know, mussels or whatever it is, um, crab, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, right? I ate a yeah, lot of seafood, yeah. salmon yeah. and, uh, or baked me bread. I even had people baking me bread on a reg on the regular to, to take my, my, uh, astrology class. Like I, I had so many different trade systems going on. It was just a riot, but in order for me to stop everything I did in a day and work with people, I needed, uh, some things to be handled. Like I, I'm not going to do that and be a martyr. Martyrism right. is silly. She right. wasn't any martyr. She was really good at making money. People get de de demonized for that, by the way, in the spiritual oh, absolutely. community. Yeah. She was a spiritual helper. Uh, she wasn't always goody two shoes. Like we got a little this and that going on. Balanced though. So yeah. she's not demonic or anything. She certainly wasn't bad. And she was just trying to look after her family in the end, really. Yeah. No, and I'll say that too, as yoga, like we as, at our yoga shala all the time, our yoga school, people ask us like, why are you charging people to practice? And it's like, because we're here to teach you. We have to pay to go to India. We have to pay our, it's an exchange of energy. Like we have exactly. to, it's an exchange of energy. I would never take us like a service for free from someone because you're giving your energy. So I'm going to give you energy back. That's how it works. Furthermore, you know? yeah. nobody would pay attention to you. So say you gave incredible advice mm -hmm. and you gave it for free. Okay. Uh, all constantly. Okay. Nobody's paying attention, by the way, that's human nature. Yeah. So when a reader, ex ex you know, you go to a reader and you arrange to be worked with. So they focus all of their energy on your energy and uh, tell you what you need to know to go forward. Okay. That's, there's an exchange of energy and wh what are you giving the reader? Mm -hmm. uh, so she's going to take the time to do that. You're exactly. going to give her an exchange. Otherwise, you won't even pay attention because that's human yeah. nature. If you yeah. didn't pay for that, a reasonable sum, not just pennies either. If right. somebody's given stuff away too cheap, any stuff, okay, nobody, it's suspect, right? It's, it's human not valuable. Nature. Yeah. You yeah. have now gouging. That's a whole nother. Yeah. There's yeah. gougers and people that absurdly overcharge. Yeah. Okay. There's that's a whole nother thing. And yes, there's charlatans in my line of work in it. Line, everybody's yeah. line of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah there's yeah. charlatans in uh, churches and preachers are charlatans, a whole bunch of them. Uh, so are a bunch of priests. So are about there's charlatans everywhere, but there's also really good people everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Uh, every, I've said this before, every group of people, whether it's a, a genre of work, a race, a gender, whatever, there's assholes everywhere. But, but yeah, no. um, one of my mentors told me once in yoga, like you, like not to undersell yourself, like oh. people value something, the more they yes. pay for it, the more they value it. And it's so true. he was like, do not undersell, undersell. Cause I, I am the only female authorized teacher in the state of Georgia that's done this yeah. and they don't under, yeah. Yeah, like, Mentor was like, do not undersell yourself because people will, will value yeah. the work you've put into being right. able to give them that. So I totally get that. So for y'all listening out there, yes, you can't get spiritual advice and help. The only entity that will give you spiritual help for free is usually God or source. Yeah. And <laughs> so, find a way and we'll help you find a way if you don't know how yourself to yeah. connect, but or go find a way and work lifetimes at connecting. Yes. Go do the work. And yeah, you can have all the spiritual advice for free you want because you can connect directly to your source. That's right. Great. But every right. once in a while as a human, you actually need to reflect. Uh, I need, I go to readers. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, wanting to buy a house years and years ago and I couldn't, it was like I was being blocked, blocked, blocked uh, for, a, you know, the universe knows what's best. You know what I mean? And I do trust that. So now I'm sitting in the house I bought finally at age 60. I went to Guy, okay, who uh, doesn't always like, I'm not going to give out his info because he's very particular at who he reads for and whatever. Okay, so if yeah, if you figure out a way to find Guy and he says yes, great, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to tell you go to Guy for a reading because he's extremely particular and that's just what he's like. He's a very private, private person. Uh, but he's also really good because he actually told me exactly how it was going down. I had a whole nother idea about it and exactly what he said happened, everything, the, the place, the kind of house, he said it would be all different than I thought. He was absolutely right. And that kind of info can be so valuable because it made me feel better when it wasn't happening 
yeah. the way I wanted it to. And even psychics and intuitives and spiritual people are human. Yeah. We're in a human body self. And I had human desires that the universe had a different idea. And a spiritual person can help you understand your true path as opposed to what you're pushing for as an yeah. ego. Oh, so, ab- yeah. absolutely. What they say, if you want to make God plan- uh, God laugh, tell him your plans. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I totally, totally get that. And yeah, Yeah. there is. Yeah, absolutely. I've been to multiple tarot card readers in my life. And I, well, I I definitely think you're one of the best, Janina, for sure, because you get, you're like nailing things, but you can tell too, you can tell somebody when somebody is really good and experienced, really solid and versus someone that's like a little, you know, so I totally get that. And sometimes you do have to just like surrender to what the universe wants because the universe yep. is going to do what it's going to do regardless of whether you like it or not you know so like it, tell universe, me about it <laughs> it doesn't really care your feelings in the matter it's just going to keep coming and going yep. so but usually yep. the universe knows best usually you can look back and go it oh does. you it were does. right <laughs> it actually <laughs> always knows best actually even if you don't like it at the time yep in retrospect, it's what you needed to grow. Guess yeah. what? Human, the human race needs to grow mm-hmm. and we need to do it this way. Or the people uh, that haven't woken up yet, like whatever's going on in this big spiritual war, they would <laughs> never, uh, they would never get it. If you just spoon feed them, they wouldn't get it down the road, lifetimes even down the road, they wouldn't get it. They would yeah. recreate the situation where they're being literally fed upon by a demonic bunch. But this way in your soul, you know, to a deep soul level, uh, never to let that happen again. That's why Absolutely. it's happening this way. Absolutely. And I will say that too, because I, for sure, I mean, we know like part of the, part of the yoga practice, and I think this probably comes true with all these different spiritual practices, whether it's practicing in divination, because you're having to work on yourself and your yep. vessel. Um, yep. And my boyfriend says this all the time, like with yoga, the main picture of yoga is to be able to see the truth through the illusion. Yep. And I know so many people in the yoga world are like, I've been, I've been horrified because they're clinging to the illusion. They're, these big teachers are promoting this. And it's like, oh my God, what have you been doing all these years? Yeah. Immediately when we shut down, immediately my boyfriend were like, something's not right. Like mm-hmm. just in your gut, you know, something's not right, you know, because you've been doing the work. You've been pro- constantly. And so I totally agree. I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And it is multiple yeah. lifetimes worth of work. And that yeah. makes me happy. I actually kind of like Marie Laveau better now, even though I never knew her because she's gone now. But, but the fact that you said that, I'm like, yes, girl, <laughs> you, you held your ground and you, you, you took care of your family. So um, awesome. And I really feel like this is going to give vindication to a lot of the Haitian uh, people in New Orleans. That's still the Creole that still practice voodoo because we see you, we see that you're, you're in a very peaceful place place. And we hope that um, over time that will be exposed. And I'm sure it will, because I think all religions are going to fall eventually. Yeah. It's just going to be faith. All right. So let me ask you about the Axe Man of New Orleans. He was a, and I'm going to have to bleep this word out, guys, but I'll put the text up. He, um, in the ni- 1918, he was often a bunch of Italian families. That's when the Italians all moved to New Orleans to get away from a corrupt government. Imagine that. Um, and he started going after Italian grocers and there was a whole story where he sent this letter to the police and said on this night, if every house has jazz music playing, I won't strike. And so there was this one night in new Orleans where jazz was playing all night bands. Cause this was 1918. It wasn't like everyone had a record player or a radio. It was bands playing. And so this is legendary night that happened in new Orleans. However, no one has been able that he was never caught. The ax man was never caught. So my question is, first of all, was the Axeman an actual human being? Because that's a theory that he was not a human being. Uh, It was a human and somebody who had a lot of righteousness in them. So they were uh, they were slaying people because of a for a righteous idea that they've taken way too far which i believe a lot of serial you know what that word you said Mm -hmm. uh those people can be like they were there was a they thought they were doing a righteous good for whoever it was did he have something against italian people or was this like a particular did he not like the fact that all these italians from, from sicily were moving into new orleans Oh, 
Okay, it came from their childhood and something to do with thinking they should be giving, uh, sharing their food with everybody. So uh, this person might have had some trauma from their childhood, uh, starvation or hunger, or so it's it's more like psychological issues here. So they were uh, grocers. So it didn't really matter that they were Italian grocers. It was the fact they were grocers. Yeah. And they needed to be so surrender to, so they should have been giving away food to people who were needy and not charging for the food. So surrender to, it had to do with this person's childhood where they were without, so traumatized. And then and that can click in certain, certain personality traits, yeah. especially if you have the po uh, potential, like depending on your birth chart, uh, a th series of childhood things wouldn't create that in most people. But if the person had certain astrological things, all of a that. sudden yeah. it can bring out, you know, like narcissism, if there's already yeah. that, and then on top of it, uh, psychopathic, right? Yes. So, uh, and so it triggers it. So these these things trigger it, and then all of a sudden you got uh, you got the makings of somebody doing that. So that's so interesting because everybody you hit on something that I haven't heard anybody who has um who has examined this case. Everybody always thinks it was because the people who owned the grocery stores were Italian, but it was because they owned grocery stores. It had nothing to do with them being Italian. That is so fascinating. So what happened to this guy? They never called him. So what happened to him? Yeah, he's very covert, mm -hmm. uh, and kept hidden and lived to a really old age. Uh, he had uh, somebody really cared about him. I don't know who that would be, but would take care of him and or bring him things when he was in hiding. Interesting. So he sounds like he maybe came, he had, he had a lot of pull then. I, I know you said he probably had starvation in his childhood, but it seems like he was very influential with people. To get yeah, he, well, I think that came from his manipulation. So he learned, uh, he survived that childhood, but it brought out these traits. And he learned to be a survivor, any which way. Okay, he went into hiding for years. Interesting, it looks like um, there was a group of young people helping him. So he was he manipulated them to go get him food and stuff that he needed. So he might have been taking care of them. Because think about it, if he wasn't taken care of or was hungry as a child, maybe that was he thought he remember, he's righteous. He right. thought he was doing good, uh, saving these kids maybe from the same kind of in his Twisted mind, mind. The yeah. same kind of uh, starvation childhood he had. Okay, so he had this group of kids. They were probably street kids that right. would run and get him stuff when he needed it. But of course, they didn't know who he was. It's not like he told them what he was doing in his spare right. time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yeah, he was really good to. So he 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 was actually really good to weird children. So he, he thought of himself as a good person. And what he was doing was on the side, he split it off in his mind that somehow, uh, you know, he was cleaning up, uh, you know, people that would charge for free. He thinks food should have been free. So he was like Dexter. Remember that show Dexter with the guy that, yeah, right. kind of like, yeah. So can I, this is, this might sound like a weird question. I don't know if the cards can say this, and this is just going to lead into my next question. Cause it kind of has to do with this as well. Do we know what race the ax man was? Is there a way to figure out what race he was? Uh, he was the most common there at the time. So white. Who, yeah. Who white. would have been the most common? He didn't stick out at all. Okay. He yeah. blended yeah. right in. He was a guy for sure. It's a guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, yeah, like I said, he actually thought he was doing good. He had a whole organization of children, uh, street children. It's almost like Oliver with uh, what Fagan, the guy, the, the story of Fagan, where he's, but they're not, they're not actually taking people off the earth. They're just stealing yeah. from them. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So he was a weird combination of thinking he was doing good and doing really awful things.
That's interesting. Oh, I mean, Janine, literally, you might have cracked the case because I've never seen that come out. So that's awesome. Oh. And the reason why I asked about the race card is because there was another case um, in 1911 that a lot of people think is associated with the Axman case of, eight, of 1918. But now what you've said, I know they're not connected at all. Um, and this was with a woman named Clementine Barnabet. She was like 17, yes, 17 years old at that time. She was a black girl. She lived in Lafayette, New Orleans, or Louisiana, which is a bit a little bit west of New Orleans, where she admitted to third. I'm going to have to bleep that word out, but taking 35 people off the Earth plane with an axe. They were all black as well, and they called her the Voodoo Queen. That she was doing these rituals to feed some voodoo you know, sensationalized voodoo the spirit, which the media, of course, was doing this back in 1911, over 100 years ago. So my question is, this story is very strange to me. Um, was she guilty of these crimes? A. B. Was she coerced into admitting to these crimes? And did religion or religious activity, especially voodoo, have anything to do with these crimes? Okay. It wasn't her. Uh, she was a... Uh, present at the scene no which would and it had she was a watcher and i feel like she had there was somebody controlling her so powerful men controlling her okay and here we've got the chariot so she might have been uh out of her like so i feel like mind control comes to mind uh that yeah. uh, the, you know that of the day version remember we know now that there's uh the demonics are all into mind control she was a mind controlled person and uh but they they just had her present to blame it on her make her look like when in fact it was um these were ritual takings wow. off taking taking those people's lives was a ritual and being done by men actually other men yeah. and uh, actually not black men by the way the the uh, couple of right. non-black people here we have white people here um and we've got the world and but they were but they or whoever whatever race they were but they weren't uh, from the same race they were right. uh, blaming it on let's say that okay and it looks like they yeah they just it was convenient to make it look like she this did girl. it, but they had her present there. Uh, so she would likely be tied to the scene. So she would know things that the police, that only the per people there would, you know, yeah. they do that. Even yeah. to this day, they'll see something at a crime scene and they won't tell the public because only the person that had been there yeah. would know yeah. these little details. And that did come up in her case because she did know a detail. That's, yeah. that's so interesting. Yeah. Studying that case, there was something very wrong with, with the, because you even think a 17 year old girl um, now, I know back in 1911, they worked more manually, so they might have been stronger than we are today. But to take an axe and actually, it, that takes a lot of strength, especially when you're whacking out a whole family at one time. And yeah. I don't think a 17-year-old girl would have that type of, of endurance and strength to be able yeah. to do that physically yeah. anyway. So that's interesting. And you guys, I'll put links to these videos down below if you missed these stories, but the media... The, forget this, surprise, surprise, in 1911, the media, which was mostly the newspapers, were the ones that kind of ran the story. They directed, of yeah. Of course they did. They directed the story. Yeah. It so, was a way to cover up the crimes <laughs> of uh, some, some ritual sect that was pulling this off. Yep. And I wonder now I sit here, I'm like, how many people have we just judged as being guilty because they told us they were guilty in the past that were in the same situation? Like, I mean, it's just it's heartbreaking to think how many people were, yeah. you know, you know, who just popped in my head and I'm just intuitive son of Sam that was all made up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blamed okay. on him. And he was hearing voices and he was mind controlled Gosh. and um, at the hands of. The dark cult. The one percent, basically, the one percent of people yeah. that are puppeteering everything. Wow, wow. Well, I hope that I know. I know that she's no longer with us anymore because that was 1911. But I hope that these spirits are these souls of these people get to rest in peace once they've lived this horrific life that they've lived. But um, so there you go, New Orleans and Lafayette for that. Now I have a question about someone that is currently from New Orleans. That is very interesting. And I've been kind of researching her and this is Anne Rice. 
Can we get, will the cards tell us a little bit about Anne Rice's background? Was she born into this group of people or is she not a part of it? What, what about Anne Rice? The, uh, right. the author. The author. Yeah. Well, wrote- she writes all the vampire stories, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. And she's, she's from New Orleans. And is she vis- visual? Like, do people see her around? I mean, I know what she looks like. I, you can Google it. She's like probably in her 70s or 80s now. Um, but she does interviews. She does all that kind of stuff. She's been contacted by the good guys because she knows uh, she knows about uh she knows about the cult family. So she may have been born into one, but she's definitely not practicing those practices. And in fact, has a deal with the good guys right now, white hats uh, around uh, helping root out people and, or get evidence on people five. Oh, good. It's that's rare. We get those kinds of, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, she, she left it. Uh, so she must've been born into it or somehow got into it at a young age, you know, on being like not on her own accord, let's say, yeah. which uh, happens a lot, by the way, she was yeah. totally on, uh, it wasn't her choice. So right. that was, uh, that, that's kind of a fluke card. So it could even be just a series of flukes and not even, not even have to do directly with her family lineage, but somehow ended up in that group and knowing a lot of things about what they were up to. And, uh, absolutely, uh, walked away so there was a male figure in her life uh that okay. feels like he was uh the connection was I don't know if, I don't know I'm not gonna say was it her dad was okay. it her uncle was it her I don't know who okay like because when you hear the story that uh uh there, like there's some survivors telling stories I can't remember what's that gal's name she's very uh She's always on um, Dark Outpost brought oh, her Jessie. up. Oh, for- Jesse. Yeah. Right, Jesse. Okay, like her aunt brought her in. It wasn't even her parents. So it could, it's a it's an influential male in the family that would secret her it, you know, in similar to Jesse, what happened to Jesse. And then she started having memories, probably was writing books. So she ended up using the experience to make her career. Okay. Which is, you know, you got to make uh, something beautiful out of horrific, right? That's yeah. actually a real huge uh, way to heal things. So it's, it's right. actually a great idea. I mean, you, what else are you going to do with that if, if you were uh, ritually abused as a young person and and then didn't even have memory of it, but some weird things were coming, turn it into some crazy books. Okay, good. Good <laughs> so for her. That was like, my next question. So yeah. for all like the you know interview with the vampire, with all these books that she wrote, was she pulling from, was she creating a fictional story from stuff that had, she had actually witnessed? Because she knew an awful lot about vampires. But think about it. She might have been using vampires as a cover up for cult members because yep. they are like vampires because yep. you know what they like. Right. So it's like uh, to me, it's like the whole vampire thing could just be a cover up for, uh, for what they're doing there. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Special wine. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she used a lot of creative license. So it wasn't from direct memories. It was more from the idea creatively of having witnessed things, but then her um, imagination turned it into something else. Like a uh, sort of nugget of information that she had yeah, she was able to create. It, it was like a whole combination of her life experiences. And some of them were unconscious and all leading back to this guy again, who would t- you know, like uh, took her to rituals and things that maybe she doesn't even know for sure happened. Like they're just right. foggy, right? It's just because they, they drug them, uh, the children and all kinds of things. Yeah. So it's absolutely directly relates to, but it's not exactly how it happened. It's more like uh, the idea of uh, demonics and, 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 and people in those rituals might've seemed like vampires. Especially to a small child. 
Yeah. You know? And then if you have no other way to express it, like for instance, I was really, really spiritual as a little girl. And uh, my mom, who's very, very Catholic to this day and is still with us, and I just love my mom, but she's absolutely like there's no telling her about. And my whole life I spent trying to explain to her that uh, there's something off there with that. But anyway, uh, so she had me for a daughter, which is really funny. So we're trying to heal each other, right? I'm trying to heal my absolute loathing of uh, Catholicism, and she's trying to heal um you know, she doesn't know it, but, uh, you know, being fearful of people like what I do for a living and every anyway, but when I was little, she saw how spiritual I was. So she was absolutely sure I should be a nun. Okay, then I had a weird experience. I was on my bike. And uh, I, I stopped in the whole world. And this is abs- I've never told anybody this except maybe my sister. But the whole world stopped and it got really stormy out, sort of like uh, it was a hot summer day. I'm on my bike and all of a sudden no one's coming out of their houses on a hot Saturday sort of afternoon thing. And everyone's in the house or somewhere. The whole world was empty. It felt like that's how I felt. And the and storm clouds came over, and then there was this uh, what appeared to be, and I didn't even I didn't even read the Bible much or anything, but I probably would have heard the story in church maybe about a burning bush because over in the corner in my eye in my visual I saw a bush burning, and then out of the bush came a voice, so that it was like a flaming bush, but it didn't look scary to me, and a voice came, kind of a thundering voice. And it said, you're going to uh, be working for me, basically, kind of I because I was at a small young age. So I would have been about nine or 10 at this point, maybe nine. I was thinking it must be God, right? God energy because of the way I was brought up, right? Catholic. Okay, so I'm thinking God's talking to me from a burning bush. And the impression I got was and i'm standing on my bike hearing this to this to my soul essence and it said you'll be a leader and spiritually leading people for me you'll do it for me okay and then i was like oh my goodness god just told me i'm gonna be a priest that's what i thought because to me nuns were actually creepy and mean little minions uh, because I went to schools that were run by nuns and I'm not telling you, and I'm sure there's some nice ones out there, but I never met one. They were all absolute, unbelievable, angry, uh, not good people. You're Every way one too of them pretty to a be creep. a nun, Janine. <laughs> unbelievable. Really so I went home and I told my mom because I thought, okay, the leader in the church because because so what i'm getting at is you can only put it into your own context of something you know right so i was being talked to by my own soul in a way it approached me to tell me something about my future okay and and interesting i think i was nine at the time which is nine like the the numerologically not and by the way my soul purpose numerologically is nine Oh, wow. It's kind of very spiritual. Yeah. Okay. So I go home, I tell my mom and I say, mom, uh, God told me I was going to be a priest. Uh, And she said, uh, no, oh no, he must have meant a nun. No, because you're a girl. So you're going, you can't be a priest. You're a girl. So you're going to be a nun. No. And she was so excited. She was so excited. And I, I, I was like, my experience of nuns were how bitter and creepy and yucky they were. And I'm like, no way was I going to be a nun. And then I actually had the realization with her telling me this, that uh, I couldn't be a priest. So I was like, okay, well, Catholicism's not for me then. Yeah, it's something and I will then. lead people spiritually, and I'll get out of the church if I. And so I, I set this whole thing into motion for me, really ex- examining and wondering what the heck Catholicism must have it all wrong because yeah. I was told personally to my soul that I was going to help people spiritually, and there's no way I'm going to be a nun. So it started this whole ball rolling where where I am today. Sure to untangle it, yeah. Yeah, I know, totally. That's all. I, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's an awesome story. And you're right, because we do pursue, especially when we're that young, we've only yeah. been given certain lens, lenses to yeah. see life through. And so yeah. we, we try to put it all in that lens. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's 
That's awesome. That's that's a great. So that's kind of what that yeah. makes me feel better researching Anne Rice because I yeah. I like her stories. I always liked yeah. her stories. I always liked yeah. her. And it's nice when you see somebody is actually doing something beneficial for humanity in a position like that versus secretly being a part of trying to to bring on humanity's demise. My last question about her was was she born female? Okay. Oh, isn't that weird? Uh, it doesn't want to say. Interesting. It doesn't want to say. Uh, it doesn't want to say because the, the spirit world, she has spirit guides helping her heal. And uh, it, she doesn't need to know that because that would be, she's still yeah, living. She's still here. She's still with us. So. Regardless, like it's like she, she'll sort that out for herself. So they're okay. protecting her. Interesting. Because her birth name was Howard. And she makes mm. a joke about that, that she did not like that name. She was named after her dad. And when she went to school, she told everybody her name was Anne because she was a girl. And I, when yeah. I read that, I laughed because my name is my mother's maiden name. Now, I have the middle yeah. name Elizabeth, but I always hated the fact that I kind of had a boy's name as a girl. So I, I empathized with her on that. But then I was like, interesting. She was born with a boy's name. Um, so interesting. Well, we'll respect that because she's still alive. And if she's, especially if she's working for the side of good, we yeah. want to give her her space. And she's older now, so we want to give her 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 space to kind of untangle all those yeah. those cobwebs all right let's the other way you could read that is she was born both male and female parts which is a common yeah. uh, more common than people think yeah so that's another way you could read that so she might have chose later to be Anne, and yeah. then that's fair but the universe says none of that matters uh she's she was i don't think she was swapped Gender, right. I think it might have been just what I just said there, like but it's like, idea. it's never mind. It says uh, she's healing from a horrible traumatic thing that she may or may not entirely know about. Right. Uh, well, then we'll keep her on our thoughts and prayers then, because that's I, anybody that's willing to like go yeah. against that, that and push back is awesome. So let's talk about, to, to, let's bring it back to modern times now, where we are now. We know that we had Katrina in 2005, I believe, that devastated the city. And I do want to put my, my thoughts and prayers to go out to every innocent human being that's just living there and has a home there that's dealing with this right now. We are thinking about you. But let's look at Ida, which was the hurricane. I believe that's the name of the hurricane that just hit New Orleans. And interestingly enough, guys, all these hurricanes hit on the same day, August 29th. So, um, which is very symbolism will be their downfall, right? So yeah. I want to know about Ida. Was Ida done by... Um, was it potentially natural or was it done by the good guys or the bad guys? Or what was the purpose of this? I knew it. The dark, the dark. Uh, bad guy op. Yeah. Yeah. Bad guy op. And they were, they had it all planned and uh, yeah, they had it all planned. So I, I, a long me, time ago. So I want to say this, like, I think a lot of us on this side of the, the board of this game, you know, we know that the, uh, the good guys are in control. We've been told that we know there's a movie, but just because they're in control doesn't mean they're still not pushback from the bad guys that are left. We're still in a W A R. This still very much is a W A R. And I feel like the good guys are trying their best to preserve human life as much as possible, yeah. but there are going to be casualties, innocent casualties in this. And so um, it, what was the purpose of them doing Ida? Are they trying to like destroy something that they don't want found or what, what's. Okay. Yes. Covert, <clears throat> covert activities, especially in new Orleans and area. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, also, they were trying to target somebody in particular or a particular group actually but it's more about information that could have come out of the area so if they shake the area up really good it's going to take attention away from something else that was maybe coming out uh, about the area and or the ley lines and or an activity that was very prevalent there or something like that so there it's a cover it's a cover-up op to take your attention away from something else. 
Are the White Hats going to move in to try to help the citizens? Or what was there? I know I have a friend who's got family there and her family's safe, but they're still trying to wait for a confirmation from friends to see if they're still okay. So we know there are casualties, innocent casualties. Yeah, it does look like they're uh, working on. So these are our good guy cards. That's my good guy military working on uh, going in there. So have have they showed up yet? Is any military showed up? I don't know yet. We're not getting that's and that's why it's so crazy because the the media. You would think the media would be all over this, but they're not. They're kind of ignoring it, and that's what makes. Oh, it of course. Here, yeah. The only thing they're paying attention to well tells you everything. Exactly. 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 Everything. Yeah. 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 That's all you need to know. Uh, obviously, a big. Uh, it starts with an H. And ends with an X. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Right? They're yeah, ignoring yeah. everything. The whole world could be blowing up. Oh, and they're going to talk about uh, yeah. how many people have you know what or haven't or have had the you know what. <laughs> oh, right. like, are you kidding me? Well, Mr. B made a comment. He did make one comment about like evacuating New Orleans, which um, guys to evacuate a city takes money and there are people in new orleans i know they don't they're very poor and so they're kind of stuck um but he said he said this so i'm from the southeast i'm used to hurricanes man versus nature nature always wins hurricanes are no joke they will flatten the house they will pull pick a car up and throw it across the state a hurricane's coming you try to get out of the way now he said this while these people are literally having to evacuate he's saying don't forget to social distance and wear your mask what a joke. What a, what an insult. So disrespectful. It's like, and I'm, I'm like, wake up people, wake up. Like people are trying to run through their lives from a hurricane and you're telling, you're telling them to worry about this. Like, come on, come on. So, so, well, our hearts are definitely with you guys in new Orleans. We love you guys. We know that that's your home and you're regardless of what was done in the past there. We know people have love for their, where they grew up in their neighborhood and their homes. And, and we know that all of our cities are going to have to be cleaned out and rebuilt. And so I do hope that the people of new Orleans will be able to carry the positive aspects of their culture into this new, this new timeline. Can I ask, I don't know how much time you have, but can I ask you one more question about moving into our new world? Yeah. I want to ask, cause there are three big theories and this doesn't have to do with new Orleans. This has to do with everyone. Uh, there are three big theories about what's going to happen when we flip into the new earth, we flip into our new, our new timeline, which I think we're about to, and I want to know which one's the correct one. So the first theory the first theory is that everybody on the planet right now is going to come with us into the new earth and that our responsibility as people awake, we're going to have to help them once we flip, understand, and accept. The second theory is that we'll, we're all going to go on the new earth and only a select few of the people who are still asleep will come with us to the new earth. The third theory is that we're the only ones going to the new earth and those that have not woken up or have not decided to wake up will not move with us and the earth will actually split into two we'll have two earths our earth and their earth and so i am just curious if the universe will let us know what actually is going to happen what to expect okay the second theory is closest won't exactly be any of those there's sort of a combination of the first and the second okay or, so some uh, people variation of I, I know no details, but yeah, I know the the military back channel, you know, that we uh, we all watch um, said that four to six percent. I know that negative forty eight said that that's like the people that per participate in this particular religion will say that those people are the four to six percent that won't come. Yep. But I know too, my boyfriend believes as well because he follows the law of one, which we're moving into fourth density positive. And if you're still in third density, you can't come with us. Um, you have to go back to another third density planet, but that might be why we're seeing people like Mr. T promote this is because this might be an easy way for those that can't come with us to leave the earth so they can go to their new planet. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Like it's a more peaceful, cause he knows we're not going to take it. He knows the one, those of us that are totally awake are not going to take this at all, regardless of what he says, we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. And so for those that haven't made that choice yet to, to polarize positive into fourth density positive, they're still in the third density. They can leave peacefully to go to another third density planet where they can continue their journey. Is there any truth behind that? 
Yeah, the, some of it's about that, because that part's about truth. But I also think he knows something about it. So if it could be stepped back, he knows the way. Also, he knows there's booby-trapped batches, so the chances are... So if you're meant to have issues with it and you made an agreement... So there's a higher spiritual thing going on, and that's kind of what you're getting at. Yeah. There's a higher spiritual... Uh, selection going on that a lot of people get really angry. They, they think, oh, someone's doing something. If you're not meant to leave the earth plane, you won't. And if right. you are, you will. And that's the bottom line. Like I, I a, a thousand percent know that everything that like if, if you're meant to uh, it's not because you're bad or you're it's like it's, it's an agreement you yeah. made. It has nothing the universe is not personal, doesn't take yeah. things personally. When I channel the spirit world, it loves everybody, even the demonics. Okay. Yeah. There's, it, it doesn't take it personally. It goes, okay, they're doing this thing because they're learning. Uh, they're going to spend eternity and who knows what that means, lifetimes in service, making up for the bad yeah. they did. Okay. So, if they made those choices to go that direction, okay, say Hollywood people, for instance, right? But if they didn't, and they were brought into it as children, a uh, whole different ball game. Yeah. Okay, so once healing's done, if they don't repeat those things, great. If they go back to it, okay, now they got, it's karma. Yeah. And it's yeah. not personal. And if you, so uh, yeah, what you said. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree too. I, I also, that doesn't mean I'm going to go out haphazardly and get this. Just, it's so no, funny. You, you, no. you, you, cause we know, we know, but you brought up, what was his name? I can't remember his name now. He was talking about feeling on one of your videos, like hearing this voice saying like, go and get it, go and get oh, it. Yeah. yeah I had yeah. that too. And we, I was yeah. like, oh my God. And my boyfriend said that he's had visions of that. And, and then we know the minute, like I hear that voice, I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not what? Like, no, yeah. but it does feel like alien, like yeah. kind of like, you yeah. know, they're, they're trying, but we're we're not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to, that's just no way. So I'm going to do that. So, well, that, that, yeah. And I, and I hope people, cause I believe that as well, that when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. And there's nothing in the world that's going to keep you here because you made that agreement. That's an agreement. And, yeah. and if it's not your time to go, no matter what happens to you, you're not going to leave. You know? yeah. So, so yeah, I'm excited. We know it's coming soon guys. Like, I mean, I have had like the piss past week, I keep every day, I end up with like a low grade fever, I'm super congested. And I know through yoga, that anytime your DNA starts to change a little bit, sometimes you'll get like this low grade fever. And it's like your body's detoxing. And so I know a lot of people are struggling right now. But guys, I really feel like we are about to just push through into this whole yeah. As you're speaking, I pull this and it's like a big yes. She's right <laughs> on. Awesome. That's so exciting, guys. That is so exciting. I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait till we're yeah. at the other side where we can all just hang out together and we can like see it, people. And I know I have people commenting all the time on this channel that they appreciate because I know we all share subscribers because we're all one yeah. big unit here. We're all one big group um that they, they're grateful for us for having our channels but we're also grateful for you guys too because you guys are holding the line as well even if you don't have a channel just being in your being in your sovereignty and holding on to that vibration is helping more than you actually know because yep. it's so much bigger than our actual bodies and so we're almost there and you can see the desperation it's kind of funny actually when you see the desperation from the other side it's actually a little comical at this point like it's just kind of like you're done like stop it. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, I guess we'll wrap it up there. I know I have so much more stuff we need to go through at some point, but that's been an hour now. So I, I want to give, give you your time, but uh, next time we'll, we'll look at some other stuff we've been looking at, especially having to do with Hollywood and some of these players in Hollywood. So, all right, guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm going to put all of Janine's uh, video links down in the description box below. Please go and subscribe to her two channels. If you have not tarot by Janine and sending Ravens, she, she is my source of news and my boyfriend's source of news every day. Every day we look to see when she's dropped a video because she literally is our, our she's our news, news oh. by Janine. So, so she's an anchor woman for the divine. So anyway. Yeah. I love it. I know, we got that, that t-shirt made for you. I'm the anchor woman for the divine. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I'm the priest for the, that's what that burning bush was saying. You're not yep. the anchor woman. You're the priest yep. for the divine. So, all right, guys, have a very safe day hold the line. It's all good. Just breathe. Everything's going to be okay. We're all in this together and we will talk to you all soon. Bye.